there are things like elegant proofs and ugly proofs, mm. words like that. I, to me, it, it feels to me a little bit is that, is that art is just freer. It, it, that, that real art means if you paint a painting, you're not constrained. You can no, I mean, I, and most artists will disagree with you and say that their best creative art, art is done under huge constraints. I mean, Stravinsky used to say that he was only creative when he put constraints on himself. So I think if you have too much freedom, very often you, you become uncreative. And mathematics is an incredibly creative subject. We're making a lot of choices in the sort of things we want to celebrate as theorems I'll talk about in a seminar or write up in a... Uh, in a paper. I mean, I, I study the world of symmetry. I can get a computer just to generate arbitrary new symmetrical objects. Um, what's interesting is to choose the ones which have something special about them. And it's just the same. You can get a computer to churn out music, but you make a choice as a composer. And I think there's an incredibly creative side to, well, wh why is this exciting? There's an ex exciting connection with another bit of mathematics which is totally unexpected. And this is why I want to tell you this story. So I think there is a lot of choice one, in mathematics. One, one nice description of, of the aesthetic response is the perception of order in what seems first to be chaotic. Yeah. And again, that calls on whether it's a fugue or a structured piece of poetry to have that underlying structure and that to some degree the aesthetic response, the aha, equivalent to an aha mathematically, is where you say, oh, okay, it does make sense. It's not just jangles. Yeah, but here's the difference. If, if we all agree that this will be the number three, yes. let's all agree, and we all agree that this symbol will mean we're going to add something. Yeah. Once we've agreed on those terms, Three means a triplet, yeah. triplet of some sort, and plus means. Then if you, then if I say three plus three equals, it, at that point it has to be six. That's not the case for Shakespeare. Hamlet could have killed his father any time Bill Shakespeare yeah, but, wanted. But, but, but you're, you're comparing two things which are not alike. It's like talking about English grammar. This, this word is spelt like this in the humans only. But the, you know, mathematics is not about spelling and grammar. It's about the big stories. Um, the stories and of these prime are numbers, of symmetry. Yeah. These are the things that we, the stories we choose to celebrate. And, and they have a truth about them. You can't change them. They're, so it, it feels like there's more constraints on mathematics. But still, the stories we choose to tell are it, as exciting and have the drama. And we we choose to tell those stories because they have the same effect on us as a piece of Shakespeare. You're but, just comparing two wrong things there. No, not exactly, because <laughs> uh, I feel no, if I wanted spell? to have like the Chinese menu of all time, I know that as soon as I got three plus three, I don't, I, I'm not allowed to turn it into seven. No, but but that, if that, I'm Picasso, right. no, no, but exactly. But if you've but, got Hamlet, you'll say, well, I'm going to spell it H-A-M-L-E-T. And then if you have it later on in the play and you misspell it, it's sort of, uh, that's uninteresting. But, but that's not what Shakespeare is about. Uh, Mathematics isn't about three plus three plus six. We're all going very, very aggressive. But you did, you are outnumbered here. With very elementary maths, with very elementary maths, it's dull, it's dry, it's ugly, it's tedious just like very ugly, prosaic English. The, the jump you have with the spoken word is from the spoken functional word to poetry. And suddenly you say, wow, that's, that's beautiful. That, that, that's something I want, I want to embrace. That's something I want to play with. I want to have, create surprises. I want to make people laugh. And, and with math, again, you have these very mundane, prosaic numbers. And you ask very basic questions like multiplication, square roots. And, uh, and you say, well, what happens if I take away three from six? Well, that's Three, that's pretty obvious. What about if I take away six from three? Hey, that's mind-blowing. The first person asks that question suddenly has to invent the idea of negative numbers. And this, this I can't hold negative three pebbles. This is, that's mind-blowing. And then you start saying, well, OK, square root of nine is three, but what about the square root of negative three? What does that mean? And that becomes curious and odd. And then you say, well, OK, let's allow that to be a number, and we'll call that uh, root three i. Is that right? Good, thank you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, I'm just what, thinking, looking at this, like, is that? I don't want to push this too hard. I think you guys are of the. You, you, you'll say one, an odd number, plus one, another odd number, <gasps> makes an even number, and right. that like shocks you, and, and it's like storytelling in a way. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It doesn't shock me, and, and you're at the heart. Or you of, find it beautiful. You're or, at the heart of something really complicated. But I could say all of computer science really originated when George Boole said, "No, one plus one doesn't equal two; it equals zero. Yeah. Who said that? George Boole. Boole. <laughs> when you go back to the basis of the idea that you might be adding in what's called clock notation or 
binary, and the effect of two ones is a zero. And that gives you the whole ideas of modern modular arithmetic, what are called finite fields and on. And so where the creativity in math comes is to say, not that it was wrong to say one plus one equals two, but there may be interesting ways of abstracting this where it's better to think of it as being something else. And so, again, we don't try and say, if you've got a dictionary, you can write Shakespeare. Right. We do try to say, if you've learned the language, you probably appreciate some of the Shakespeare.